Well, hello everyone, good afternoon. My name is Marco, and I'm glad to be here presenting you the research project we conducted last year at ST Science, Technology and Engineering, a company here from Porto Alegre focused on developing research projects for the wind for the engineering industry. And today uh, we are going to talk about the predicting of the inlet wind profile, this little guy here, of the neutral atmospheric boundary layer, this profile, uh, applied to wind resource assessment over a non-flat terrain using CFD, computational fluid dynamics. Well, our research are being based basically in two main data. The first of all is our, uh, the, the first of the two is our CFD calculations. And the second one is real wind measurements made by uh, real wind masks. So we're making our calculations in a real relief. Uh, here is our computational domain. It is a square uh, region with 10 kilometers of site. And we will be comparing the results in the point, the, the velocity calculated in the point where the anemometer is located with the data provided by the real anemometer. This data provided by the real anemometer is a high quality one year campaign. And after this data is collected, we can, uh, we can see, we can obtain this wind rows. This wind rows here is showing the frequency distributions of the wind for different directions of the wind, the different wind sectors. But we also can have the mean velocity from each of these wind sectors. And, okay, we have a problem. A problem is that our input for the, safety, the, the data we have as an input, that is the, velo the, the mean velocity obtained from the, the, from the anemometer, is in the middle of our terrain. While for the CFD simulation, we need as an input the inlet profile of the wind. So, we have a question. In a non-flat terrain, what inlet velocity profile here leads to a known velocity measured by a wind mast that is located in the middle of the computational domain? Well, we can start thinking and applying the neutral atmospheric boundary layer uh, theory found in the literature since Richards and Hoxie, 1993. And this modeling, this ABL modeling, uses a reference velocity that here we are calling UN, that is the inlet reference velocity at some height, Z ref. But this, ref this inlet reference velocity, we don't know either how to obtain it. If we start uh, the first hypothesis, maybe assuming, assuming that our inlet reference velocity is the same as the velocity measured by our anemometer. But if we do, if we do this, oh dear, we are in trouble we are getting errors as high as 23%. What are we seeing here in this plot? In the x-axis is our wind sectors, the wind directions from where the, the wind is coming from. And in the y-axis, our velocities. The blue points are the velocity measured by the real anemometer. And the red crosses are the velocity calculated by the CFD simulations where the anemometer is located. And we are getting this very high errors. So, we started thinking, thinking, trying, and we arrived at a conclusion, we arrived at a method, a new methodology, a new approach for obtaining this inlet reference velocity. This inlet reference velocity. That is in, a in a, an iterative approach. 
where we use the, the velocity measured by the motor, the mean velocity measured by the motor, only as an initial guess for this iterative approach. And before, we, uh, we were making only one, only one simulation for each wind sector. Now, we are needing to do several simulations for each wind sector. In this case, from uh, um, here, we are showing the convergence history of some velocities for the wind sector um, 120 degrees. The red line is our objective for this wind sector. The red line is the mean velocity measured by the motor. The dashed blue line is the velocity calculated by our CFD simulation. And we are we are we need that this, this velocity be as as close as pro, as close as possible from the reference the, the measured velocity. And after 20 simulations modifying the, the inlet reference velocity, we arrive at, a, at an asymptotic approximation. And here we also see the dotted green curve is the inlet reference velocity that is being modified by our iterative approach. And we see that it should be different from the measured velocity in order to get in the point where the motor is located a velocity near what we need to have. <coughs> well, now we have our answer for the, the question what inlet, inlet velocity leads us, leads to, to a non-velocity measured in the anemometer's location. Our iterative approach is giving us errors as low as 1%. Well, that's good. Here we see also uh, the, the same plot we have seen before, the wind sectors and the velocities. The blue points are the velocity measured by the anemometer, the red crosses are the velocity calculated from the CFD simulations where the anemometer is located, and the green triangles are the inlet reference velocity determined by our methodology in order to have this, to eliminate the errors from the velocity calculated where the anemometer is located. And as a conclusion, we arrived at this iterative methodology for the inlet reference velocity offers a more, real, more reliable wind map for wind resource assessment. And as next steps, uh, it is planned to place a flat area around the terrain in order to avoid some convergence issues that may happen if we have, for example, a steep hill too close to the inlet or the outlet. And apply more recent, and, and also apply more recent neutral ABL model. We would like to give uh, a special thanks to CD Adapco, that is the company that develops and offers the software we used in our search, Star uh, the CFD software we use in our search, Star CCM Plus, and that also offers a special plugin to easy to make the task of setting up wind park simulations easier. So if you want to talk to me later about CD Adapco pro projects, their, uh, their capabilities, I'd be happy to talk with you and the better opportunity for you. Thank you very much.